Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English. Today, I've got 20 of the most common English words to share with you. I'm going to show you how to pronounce them correctly, but even better, how to actually pronounce these words naturally. This will help you to understand fast talking native speakers, but also help you to sound more relaxed as you begin to speak English more fluently. My main focus today is to give you lots of practice. So don't just watch this lesson, okay? I want you to practice out loud with me. And if you'd like to take everything that you learned from today's lesson and practice regularly with other people, then I really encourage you to check out Lingoda, one of the world's best online language schools. Anyone who watches this channel knows that I'm a huge fan of Lingoda. And in case you haven't already noticed, they have a new look and I like it. To celebrate, Lingoda have just introduced a range of new quizzes and extra homework to their lesson so that you can keep learning even when you're not in class. As a teacher, one of the main reasons I recommend Lingoda to my students is because they offer an easy to follow, structured path to reaching virtually any language certification. And even if you simply want to improve your conversation skills, Lingoda's small group classes are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to help you get the practice that you need. The next Lingoda Sprint is just around the corner too. This is a 12 week challenge designed to boost your language skills. And if you complete it, you can get up to 100% of your payment back, which is crazy good. I share more details about all of that up here in this video. But if you're not quite ready to jump in and take the Sprint, Lingoda offer lots of different options to suit your learning goals and your availability including the chance to experience their classes for seven days, absolutely free. And that's all before you commit to regular study with them. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure you check out the link in the description below. I will put the link to their Instagram feed down there too, because there's lots of student success stories there and they're always great to read. And if you do decide to jump in and start the sprint, make sure you use this code right here, which will give you a discount at the checkout. And if you're already a student of Lingoda, make sure you let me know how your classes are going down in the comments below. The most common words in English are grammatical words. They're articles, they're prepositions, they're pronouns, and even some really simple verbs that we use every day. And because they're so common and they get used so often, native English speakers will use them really quickly and efficiently as we speak, which means that the pronunciation of the word that you learn in a dictionary or from your teacher at school may not be what it truly sounds like when a native English speaker actually speaks it. So today we'll talk about stressed and unstressed forms linking and contractions. These are all really important aspects of English pronunciation that you need to understand if you want to use English fluently. I'm going to share them in no particular order, mostly because it's really difficult to know which one of these words is actually the most common. They are all extremely common and they probably jostle around for the number one position. Of course, I will be sharing all of these words in my accent, my Australian English accent. There are some slight variations in the way that these words are pronounced across English accents, though lots of similarities as well. Starting at number 20, sometimes you'll hear this word stressed as at with that a ah, strong vowel sound. You need to be here at three o'clock. So when we're stressing at, we're emphasizing and making the meaning stronger. You need to be here exactly at three o'clock, not before, not after, at three. But most of the time when you hear this word, it's not stressed and the vowel sound reduces down to become that reduced vowel sound, the schwa, uh, ut, ut. I'll meet you at the car. At the car, at the car. I'll meet you at the car. I'll pick you up at eight. At, 
at eight. Up at eight. I'll pick you up at eight. Your turn. Now we have the verb do. Now of course it conjugates, doesn't it? It can be do or does depending on the subject. So what you need to remember is that when do is the main verb in a sentence, it's usually stressed and it has that oo vowel sound. I do it often. Do. Do it. I do it often. But as an auxiliary verb, if it's helping the main verb in a sentence, then it usually reduces down. So do becomes d. Do you want to come? Dear. Dear. Do you want to come? Your turn. Does she need to see it? Does, does, does she? Does she? Does she need to see it? Try it. So as a pronoun, you can be stressed, especially when you need to clarify who you're talking to or who you're talking about. I didn't ask you, I asked her. So that's when we hear it really strong, you. But most of the time when you hear this word, you just hear y, y. Do you know who did it? Do you? Do you? Do you know? Do you know who did it? I'll meet you there. Meet you. I'll meet you there. Your turn. As can be stressed, I guess it didn't take as long as last time, but usually it's an unstressed word and it sounds a little more like uz, uz. Again, we're using that schwa sound for the unstressed vowel sound. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Uz, as hard as. One pronunciation pattern to look for, but more importantly to listen for, is the way that words that start with a vowel sound often link to the last sound of the word before it when spoken naturally. Now, as starts with a vowel sound, so this is the perfect time to mention it and to show you how it works. Wasn't as hard as. It wasn't as hard as I thought. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Now pronouns, grammatical words that start with the letter H, like he, him, her, and we can even include have and has, they're often pronounced without the H sound when we're speaking quickly. Does he want to come? Does he? Does he? Try it. I'll ask him if you want. Ask him. I'll ask him. I'll ask him if you want. But you've got to remember, if you're using this reduced form and you're not pronouncing the H, you must be linking this word to the one before it. Okay, you can't drop the H sound when it's the first word in a sentence and say E really liked the party. You have to pronounce that H. He really liked the party. But you can drop it in the middle of a sentence. I want to buy a car. Buy a, buy a, buy a car. I want to buy a car. Try it. Now we have the verb have, which is another very popular English verb. So like do, we conjugate have, depending on the subject. So sometimes it's has, in the past it's had, and in all of those examples we're using the strong a vowel sound. Now when have is the main verb in a sentence, it's stressed. Though sometimes, just like with those pronouns, Native speakers will drop that H sound when we're speaking quickly. She has three dogs. She is. She is. She has three. I have two. I have. I have two. You probably know that have is an auxiliary verb in all of the perfect tenses 
which is why it's one of the most common English verbs. We see it a lot. And when it's spoken naturally, we often use contractions. So instead of saying, I have, I've. We have, we've. He has, he's. But even as an auxiliary verb, it can be stressed, especially if we want to emphasize that something is true. So I can easily say, I've been to India. I've been. So it's unstressed there. But what if someone said, no, you haven't. I have. I have been to India twice. Grammatically, but is used in several different ways. It can be stressed and you'll hear that strong vowel sound, a, uh, but. I'll help you, but I need a favor from you first. More often than not, but is unstressed and then the pronunciation changes. But I don't want to. But, but, but I, but I don't want to. They ate it, but they didn't like it. But they, but they, but they didn't like it. Try it. Now, this is an unusual one to include in this list because usually we stress negative forms in English. I'm not hungry. I'm not. But the adverb not is usually, almost always, linked to the verb in spoken English. We say, I don't like it. We can't believe it. So most of the time, not is not pronounced as not, it's contracted and it sounds like nt. 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 Can't. Won't. Haven't. Hasn't. Four. It is quite unusual to hear this word pronounced as for in spoken English. So when you hear four, we're usually referring to the noun, the number four. Four is usually unstressed. And again, that vowel sound reduces down to the schwa. We hear f, f, uh, uh, uh. Nothing, right? I bought this apple for you. F, for you. I bought this apple for you. Can you get one for me? For me? Can you get one for me? Try. 99% of the time you hear it being used in English, it's unstressed. So when I said it just then, I stressed it so that you knew which word I was talking about. But usually it sounds a lot more like it, it, it's that schwa sound again. And we usually use a stop T at the end as well, so no air is released. Instead of saying it, the air is caught by our tongue. It, 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 it's caught there so that we can move on to the next word really quickly. It, I want it now. It, want it. It now. I want it now. Get it out of the car. It, get it out. Get it out of the car. Try it. Goodness, there are actually lots of reduced forms in that one, aren't there? Get it out of the car. Get it out of the car. Now I've created a whole learning playlist that explains the different ways that we link words together in spoken English. So if you haven't seen it yet, absolutely watch all of the videos up in this playlist. And even if you have, it's the type of practice that you need to review, you need to come back to. So it might be a good time to go back to those lessons and remind yourself about those familiar ways that we link sounds together in English. That can be stressed or unstressed. We say that when it's stressed with that a ah vowel sound. So when it's used as a determiner, to explain which specific thing we're talking about, you'll hear it stressed because it needs to be clear. We'll say, not this one, that one. 
that one. And as an adverb, it will probably also be stressed too. We'll say, I'm not that hungry, that hungry. But when that is used as a conjunction and it's connecting two clauses together, it's unstressed. It reduces down to the, the. It's that schwa sound again, the vowel sound reducing down from that to the. I told her that I'd be there. The, that I'd, that I'd be there. I told her that I'd be there. Your turn. On. Here's another example of a grammatical word that starts with a vowel sound. So when it's said naturally, it's often linked to the word that comes before it. It's on my computer. It's on. It's on. It's on my computer. We'll go on Sunday. Go on. Go on. We'll go on Sunday. Try it. The same rules apply for in. When we use it naturally, we need to focus on linking it to the sound that comes before it. I'll meet you in there. You win. I'll meet you in there. Try it. That extra w linking sound between two vowels there is a bit of a pronunciation trick. Watch this lesson up here if you want to learn a little bit more about this type of linking. Let's talk about the articles a and an because they are unstressed most of the time. So usually when we want to stress and clarify to say that it's just one of something that we want, we say one. So we don't say, I'll have a carrot. We say, I'll have one carrot, please. So most of the time, these articles are unstressed. We don't hear a and an, we just hear that reduced sound, a, an. Can you take a break? A, a break? Can you take a break? It was an excellent event. An was an was an excellent. It was an excellent event. Your turn. Now, of course, and must make our list of most commonly used words, right? When it's stressed, we say and, but it becomes and unstressed. And, and often we drop that d sound at the end. And, and. But compare these with me. When we're stressing, I would say, you and me are going. And unstressed, you and me are going. You and me, you and me, you and me are going. Come and visit me. And and visit, and visit. Come and visit me. Try it. How could we forget of? It's almost always unstressed as well. So instead of saying oh, 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 of, we just need to relax our mouth, relax that vowel sound down to uh, of, of. Would you like a cup of tea? Of tea, of, of, cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea? Notice that link between of and the consonant before it. Cup of, cup of tea. Now to, when it's spelt like this, is not usually stressed. It's usually unstressed. So we reduce it down from to, to, t, t. I want to go to the beach, to the beach, to, to, to the beach. I want to go to the beach. Try it. Be is the most commonly used verb in English, but it does have several different forms, doesn't it? Depending on the subject and the tense. So just like do and have, 
The be verb can be used as a main verb in a sentence. I'll be home soon. Be, be, be home. So instead of really stressing that verb, be, it's just a shorter version. Be, I'll be home soon. I'll be home soon. You will definitely hear the unstressed forms of be when it's used as an auxiliary verb in the continuous tense, in the passive voice. You're going to hear I am as I'm going. We are as we're waiting. Or it is as it's raining. Right? It's really common to hear these contractions when the be verb is the auxiliary verb. When it's used in the past tense, the be verb is usually reduced as well. And again, we see that schwa sound. Was becomes was, was, was. I was upstairs earlier. Was. I was. I was upstairs earlier. Try it. They were really hungry. W -w. They were. They were really hungry. Your turn. Last, but definitely not the least, is the. The. Now, you won't hear it pronounced like the very often, maybe just in your English class. You'll definitely hear a shorter version, the, the, the. And you'll also hear the, the. That's our favorite schwa sound making another appearance. The, the. So with the word the, we have two unstressed forms because the pronunciation changes depending on the word that follows it. If the word the is followed by a word that starts with a consonant sound, then that's when we hear that lazy schwa sound again. The, the. You left it in the car. The, the car, the car. You left it in the car. Try it. If the word the is followed by a vowel sound, then it's pronounced the, the, the. Can you hear the difference? The, the. How do we get to the airport? The. The airport. The airport. How do we get to the airport? Try it. You made it all the way through. Awesome work. Make sure you bookmark this video, save it to a playlist because you'll need to come back to it and review it and practice several times with me. It's not the kind of thing that you'll just instantly know. You've got to put in the practice. And you'll be able to practice using all of these words naturally and in context in any of my imitation lessons. Remember, if you want to learn a little more about linking and naturally spoken English, then definitely check out this playlist up here. You will absolutely love it. And I'll see you in there.